Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. So today we'll be checking out one of your recommendations, guys. Today we'll be checking out a Catholic sister as Yusuf ST. I don't know if I got the name correctly. Please pardon me. Why he accepted Islam? 2011. And this is actually way way back, guys. But guys, I want to say this is going to be welcome to the New Year 2023. When I react to this. December 31st. So I know for this tomorrow. So welcome to 2023. And I, I want to use this medium to say thank you for just being here. It's, it's a huge honor. I appreciate it. guys. This video is actually sponsored by Rombri, guys. They made this video possible. Please make sure you check them out. You're gonna get 15% off using my promo code, guys. This shirt is actually from them. So guys, you know how cool it is, guys. Let's get straight into this. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Sister, um, thank you for waiting. Would you please state your name and occupation, then state your question. I'm Sakina de Souza, and uh, I'm a Catholic. I believe uh, Brother Yusuf was a Catholic before. I would like to ask him a simple question. He was brought up like a Catholic, but what made him change? Doesn't he believe that the Messiah is true? Or did he ever feel that the uh, religion, Catholic religion, has not brought up any Messiah and the Bible is false? I would like to just know what that means. Because he said he was a Catholic before and now he has become a Muslim. What made you change? What was that storyline before? Doesn't he believe that there is a Messiah? Or the Messiah had come, saved us, died on the cross? Thank you very much for a good question. I hate to disappoint you, but I wasn't a Catholic. But I was with a Catholic priest the night that he accepted Islam. And I asked him these questions you asked me. Because after all, I was still a Christian, a preacher in Christianity, and I wanted to know why my best friend, a Catholic priest, had converted. That's a pretty weird thing. A Catholic priest is not like a regular preacher in the Protestant religion. A Catholic priest has given up his, given up everything. He's given up his life to be a Catholic priest. When he enters into this realm, he's basically given away everything. He can't have a wife, he can't have children, obviously no grandchildren. He has no home, he just lives in a rectory or wherever they give him a place to stay. And he's sent wherever they tell him to go, do whatever he's told to do, and that's it. And he cannot disobey the Pope, otherwise they can kick him out of the religion. And if they do, he's excommunicated and he goes to hell forever. So how would a person like this want to become one of those Muslim terrorists? That's what I wanted to know. He explained in a very few beautiful words something that I came to learn for myself. He said that he was sincerely in the Catholic religion because he believed in God. That he had studied, his degree was in theology, and a part of the teaching that they as priests have is to study Islam. Every priest is forced to study Islam. Now you may not know that, but you can ask your priest and he'll confirm it. And when you study Islam, even when Islam is taught to you by somebody who hates Islam, as long as they don't corrupt it too far, you can still see the truth in Islam. A classical example happened to me just recently when I was in Saudi Arabia. A friend of mine, very old copy of one of the first Qurans ever translated to English by George Sale. George Sale hated Islam, he hated the Muslims, but when he translated the Quran to English, he was true he was true to the text of the words. Although maybe not getting all the meaning, he certainly was true to the text of the words. I was shocked when I read it. Have you seen it? You know what I'm talking about. Amazing. And listen to this. George Bernard Shaw, for instance, is one of many, a long list of people who read this and realized the truth of Islam. When people see the truth of Islam, it can change them if they want to be guided. If they want the truth, it can change them. You might think, I'm a Catholic, I'll never be anything but a Catholic. But I'm going to ask you a question, 
And I want you to be honest. This is not for you to, you know, start a debate, but just be honest. Was Jesus a Catholic? No. And it's not open to debate, so there's no point in opening that up because you know and I know he wasn't. The Catholic Church was in business about 300 years before Jesus was born. It's on their website. Don't go like this. It's on their website. That's where I took it from. The Catholic Church was really started in Rome by Alexander the Great. Do you know what the word Catholic means? It means universal. It was the universal church for the Roman Empire. If you didn't join it, you could not be a Roman citizen. And it was opposed to the teachings of Judaism and opposed to the teachings of the early Christians for more than 200 and some years. And they were diametrically opposed to each other to the extent that it was the Romans killing the early Christians. Now, if you understand that and you go to their website and read, they didn't even take over Christianity until the year 325 A.D. And when they did, they changed a lot of things. Again, referring to their own website. But if you want to check it in Brand Britannica or Americana or grow your encyclopedias, go ahead and read about the Catholic Church. When in August of 325 A.D. at the Nicaea Council, they took over First thing they said was, let's change the date of the birth of Jesus to be the same date as that of Mithras, which was the god, one of the gods worshipped there, and also the sun god's birthday was the same day, December the 25th, believing it to be the shortest day of the year. And Constantine was a sun worshipper of Saul Invictus. Go to the website, read it for yourself. There are a lot of points, but not the least of which, even today, if you go in any Catholic church, and I have, you'll see so many portraits and statues and idols and images throughout the whole place that for the one who's never experienced that, for a Muslim who knows about these images, he'll be like, whoa, I was below. Whoa, what's this? The first time I walked in a Catholic church, I was about 10 years old. I was shocked. I was shocked at the idols and statues everywhere because in the Protestant religion, we were brought up to believe that the second commandment was just as important as, as the first commandment. The first commandment in the Bible, in Exodus, is the same as the first commandment in the book of Deuteronomy. It says, I am the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt in the house of bondage. You know no other God beside me. Beside me there's no other gods. Thou shalt not have any other gods beside me. How many in this room agree with that commandment? Raise your hand. You notice... The Muslims are raising their hand because it means Shadu la ilaha illallah. That's the first commandment for us as well. The second commandment you have clearly says, Thou shalt not make any idol, any graven image of anything that creeps upon the earth, swims in the sea beneath, or flies in the air above. And I was sitting in a church one time, sitting there in the morning service, watching, you know, the preacher talk. And you know, they go on and on and on. And sometimes you lose your train of thought. I was looking. Whoa! On the front of the podium, there was a fish. A fish. For the symbol, make you fishers of men. It had a fish. I said, whoa. Then I looked up above his head at the big stained glass window, and it had a dove. And he had the, the olive branch in his mouth. The dove is flying, the bird, you know? I said, whoa. And then I look over here, and there's a cross with a man hanging on it. And I said, wow, they didn't miss a single one. They got them all. Something walking on the earth, something swimming in the sea beneath, something flying in the air above. So look at these two things. Clearly, the first two of the Ten Commandments, bang, bang, boom. Because if you said God is more than one, where did you get it from? When Jesus is talking to his own companions, and they ask him, what's the greatest commandment? Mark 12, 29. Clear. The greatest commandment is to know, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. And you have to love him with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. And this is no different from what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was saying the same thing to his people. Same thing I mentioned in the lecture. 
This is certainly for us the same. So what you see is Muslims practicing the commandments, and you see people claiming the commandments, but practicing something else. And they, I have seen more converts from the Catholic Church than any other of the many sects of Christianity, and especially from the nuns, priests, and even an archbishop. And all of them are better than me. Those guys and women that I see do this, they still sacrifice their whole life to get the true message of Islam, not only to you, but to Muslims as well, because we all need to know about it. But thanks for a great question. I feel this was amazing. Like this was a great question and a great answer was given to it. If I love when he said true Islam, because what I've come to know is that Islam actually worship God. Like I feel I got this relief. I, I don't know why some people feel I'm doing Muslim video for view clout. Like I can tell you I'm doing this for myself and because it it helps me. Like I've always been in this state of mind that I've always been feeling stressed, like then I watched the video, like what is your purpose in life? Then like I feel the video changed me, like I can tell you like me reacting to this, it actually helps me because when I watched that video it was like your purpose in life is to worship God, like give him the praise he deserves, like God is superior to any other being. Like our purpose in this life is just to worship God. So I feel people are just trying to take people are forgetting why they were born. And people think they were brought to this life to make money and stuff, but your purpose is to worship God. Like put that as your number one priority. Like when you put God first, it's in the Bible, if you put God first, all things will be added unto you. I feel if you put God first. You feel joy, you feel happiness, like anxiety is out. I don't know how to explain it, but that video really helped transform my mindset and my life entirely. Like I became very, very happy. Back to this video. What he's saying, I feel the Catholic are uh, personally, this is my personal opinion. I feel the Catholics are worshiping a whole thing, like because they honor Mary, and I feel Mary isn't supposed to be Mary is an amazing person she gave it to the messiah and i think she's supposed to be giving that accolade but not as much as the catholics are giving to her i feel the catholics are worshiping mary indirectly and i i don't just believe on what they believe i don't believe on the faith i don't saint john saint luke i don't but let's take it back to christianity and me saying this and being honest i feel we christians even if someone tell me there's TV God in one, this is something I believed in without looking into it. And this is something that I'm seeing proves that Jesus always made mention that God was greater than him. Jesus always prayed to God. Like these things are moving in my ear. Like I feel this is the only part in the full video and Based on the videos I've watched, based on Christians, Muslims, this is the only part I know that I feel, I believe, based on what I've read, and I feel Christians are going wrong. Because people saying God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit are one. It was only made mention in God. When I read, it was only used when they want to baptize someone. But... In Revelations, I haven't read it yet, but I watched a video that was saying it's the Trinity is actually explained more in, in Revelations, which I'm going to check out. Maybe, maybe by next week, I'm going to release a video about that. But like for now, based on my own understanding and what I've researched, Trinity was the word Trinity is it, it isn't in the Bible, and Jesus never said Jesus said I am a father of one, but if you read, it's always saying my father is greater than I am. So I don't know what, I don't know the person that come up with that Trinity stuff. But I feel maybe the person is trying to say that, like, I don't really know. I don't know. But what my mind is like, maybe the person is trying to say there's a 
there's a throne. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Like, I don't know, like, but Jesus said he does not have partners. God said he does not have partners. I won't say Jesus and the Holy Spirit are his partners. I will say, maybe based on the high ranking, that the, Jesus and the Holy Spirit is the second in line. But that's the word I will use. Because I believe that Jesus died on the cross. And it was written in the Bible that Jesus died on the cross. So I don't really get why you guys don't believe the fact that Jesus died. But I feel this is the only part I'm getting. This is the only part. Like, okay, I, I have accepted the fact that Trinity may not be true. But, like, proof to me that Jesus didn't die on the cross. Like, this is something that I know that is impossible to prove when Jesus died on the cross. Like, Jesus, like, I read the Bible, like, you know, I think it's Matthew. Like, I, when I had this conversation with someone about the Trinity, then, we, like, we went deep, when we did this argument for, like, three hours, and he showed me some books in the Bible where Jesus died on the cross, some stuff, some stuff. And, but, like, I don't have a tangible reason, like, to say Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit are one. Like, I haven't gotten the proof yet. So, at the end of this video, and I felt like Catholics are prone to convert to Muslims. Like, they are prone, if, even if they don't convert to Muslims, they actually go to, maybe they become Pentecostals, Anglican. I'm a Pentecostal. So, because I feel you always, only, I, I, don't, I don't really believe in. I don't think they are practicing Christianity. Like, they are Christians, they believe in the, the they are followers of Christ, but I, I don't really, really know how it's played. No offense to any Catholic out there, but like for me, I don't just think it's, it's the right. This is my personal opinion. Please, I'm sorry. No offense to nobody. Guys, please to like, subscribe to my channel. We'll see you on the next video, guys. Please.